Hello everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech. Today I'm going to start a brand new series which is going to be called Comments of the Day. Now I want a chance to go through and uh, highlight some great comments I get. Look, I want to say thank you to everybody who leaves uh, comments on the channel and on the videos because there are some great comments and unfortunately uh, due to my schedule and just the way things have been going lately in my life, I have not had time to respond to really a lot of these comments. Some of them, um, some people have spent a lot of time and put in a lot of effort into some of these comments. And I want to start highlighting them regularly. Now, I won't be doing these episodes daily, but more like um, every week I'll come out with a new video where I'll highlight a few comments. Maybe we can go through some technical details on some of these comments, help some people out, and also talk about some issues that are going on in the CRT and PVM scene. But let's go ahead now. We're going to start with the very first comment of the day that I'm going to be highlighting on the first ever comment of the day video for Retro Tech. All right, this comes from a link between provinces. And this is back on the what to consider when buying an, a CRT on eBay where I talked in heavy detail about a certain seller that's the biggest seller in the United States of America for selling PVMs and BVMs, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's get on to the comment first. I bought a PVM 9L2 from this seller on January 11th. I had it shipped all the way to Northern Canada for quite a fee, and when it arrived, the shell was cracked, and I was missing one of the back panels. I can clearly tell that the unit I received was not what was pictured in the ad. Not long after I found the monitor would power on and struggle to display a picture when rebooted. I reached out to eBay and requested that they take action. The seller offered to send me a partial refund of 20 US dollars and said they would send me back, send me a back cover as I was not willing to spend hundreds to ship it back to, to the southern United States. I never received the cover and quite honestly, I will be purchasing another unit elsewhere as the crack and other issues are quite unbearable. So I'm not really sure what happened here. This is a international uh, incident, unfortunately. So I'm not sure how eBay and coverage works if you're sending something internationally, if it's the same thing as if you bought this in America, because I know if you bought this in America and it came from America, you would be able to claim, um, against eBay that this was not as advertised. Now, again, I would recommend never taking any kind of a refund from this uh, seller. And I'll show you the, well, let's go through and just take a quick look here at the seller. And uh, of course, this is Video Audio Studios. This is currently the biggest seller of Sony PVMs and BVMs uh, on the market. So uh, if you go in there and go get onto eBay and search for PVMs or BVMs, you're gonna find this list, uh, many of them are going to be listed from this seller. So I went through and combed through the last, I don't know, three months of feedback, and there wasn't much for Sony Trinitrons. Uh, most of them were for small, I, you know, nine to eight inch monitors, which is like the one that was bought here. And most people, uh, like this one, actually had a good feedback, no complaints, uh, helpful for a Sony PVM 14 M2. So there's not much feedback, positive or negative, but there were a couple positives. However, I did find one comment that was a little strange under the positive feedbacks where it says uh, it had a different serial number than the CRT pictures in the listing. So here we are again. It's obvious the seller's not changed his tactics for uh, listing things that don't match. Uh, they don't match what they're actually getting. So. Uh, still not doing that. I'd still recommend you staying away from this seller. And if you want to go back and watch the video, I'll put a tag to it. But we go through at that time and show that uh, there's just a lot of bad stuff going on here. And eBay actually helps out these bigger sellers by deleting neutral and negative comments and negative feedback. Uh, because there's not, I went through the, he did have some negative and neutral feedback, but it was nothing to do with any CRT or PVM or BVM or anything. So again, take a look at that, but I'm very sorry that happened to you. I would just unfortunately stay away from it if you can't be guaranteed. Never get a PVM or BVM shipped to you that you're expecting to be in good condition unless it's covered, okay? So make sure that you're covered 
whether the seller packs it properly or in, you know, incorrectly and it gets damaged, that's on them. But just make sure you're covered. And sometimes you could even use a credit card to pay for something. Uh, and then if they say, you know, try to fight you for the charges, then uh, you can, you know, go dispute the charges directly to your credit card company. Or uh, if you're having any other troubles, you know, again, try to reach out to eBay, but do not accept a partial offer for anything unless you're accepting that partial offer as being kind of a final deal, because I think that's the way this guy probably got away with it was offering the $20. So, okay, on to comment number two, and this is from Jan Paganowski. And uh, Jan asked, what's the aperture control for? That's on the Sony PVM 1350. And this is actually a control button that is on nearly all Sony PVMs that have these knobs. And um, let's just take a look right here. It says you turn this clockwise for more sharpness and counterclockwise for uh, less sharpness. And if you note, see the note down here, it says aperture, chroma, and phase controls, which are those buttons that you see besides brightness, which is obviously brightness and um, contrast. Those two work on everything, but these are only going to be working on every other type of input except RGB. So if you start using these controls like this, aperture, chroma, or phase, and you're not seeing anything and you're using RGB, it's because it's not supposed to work. A phase control, before you ask me, that's uh, to turn it clockwise is going to actually give you skin tones of greenish colors and counterclockwise will make them purplish. Again, this is going to be pretty much for composite S video and component video use only for phase control. So just remember that, but that's going to make your greenish, your skin color. So if you're trying to adjust that someone's skin looks different, you know, you can use that to make it purple or greenish if it doesn't look right. Chroma control, you could turn this clockwise to make color intensity higher and counterclockwise to lower the color intensity. And that, again, only works with everything except RGB. So don't forget, they will have no effect on RGB signals. So don't think you have a problem with your monitor if you start using those knobs while you're using RGB. Just try it on your uh, VCR or LaserDisc or S-Video systems that you're using, and uh, it'll, it, it'll help you improve those, those quali the picture quality on there by either you know, turning up your screen intensity for colors and making them robust a little bit more if it seems a little dark. So that's what you want to use those buttons for, is anything except that. Uh, but that's one of the advantages of using Component, which maybe I'll go into deeper on another video uh, over RGB, is actually uh, they, you get to use those screen controls while you're using Component. All right, so this is the last comment. It came from Random Task, and I know he spent a lot of time on it, so I wanted to uh, highlight it here as our final comment of the day. And um, it's going back to the limited run games uh, video that I talked about how they were selling, you know, this extremely high expensive copy of a game that you can literally get for $10 or less at any gaming store uh, with no extras except for just a new box and some, you know, sh swag that's kind of like cheap looking. So, but anyway, let's not get into that again. Uh, Random Test said, what you said is right, and I'm not trying to defend limited run games, but the only reason a company like them is able to exist is because paying for digital distribution was accepted. It shouldn't have been, but it was, so games being released without a physical copy became normal and acceptable, which opened a niche for companies like limited run games to fulfill. Valve normalized and popularized digital distribution and the many negatives it comes with, such as being charged for a download and games being intentionally released unfinished or unplayable without a patch because they can easily patch it through whatever platform, which only further encourages games to be released that way. Rampant downloadable content and microtransactions made games more expensive than ever when you take into consideration we, pay, we went from paying for a physical copy with a box manual to paying for a download license for an incomplete game it relies on an internet connection, has downloadable content, and or MTX, microtransactions, 
don't get anything in return for your money, etc. So Valve and people that refuse to boycott Steam should get most of the blame. If distri distribution were never accepted, then limited run games wouldn't exist. I will give them credit for giving PC proper physical releases every now and then, an actual physical copy with the entire game or disc and doesn't require any platform like Steam. They opened orders for double switch for PC last Friday, so I bought it solely for being a proper physical copy for PC. I switched to piracy with PC with digital only. Only games I buy are the very rare proper physical copies like double switch that PC gets and older used physical copies. And this is a uh, great comment. Obviously, I think you spent a lot of time putting it together. And um, I can just add a little bit more of what I think. I, I completely agree with you that a lot of people have accepted the uh, digital distribution. Now, personally, I hate digital distribution. I like having a physical copy of everything. I like to have a manual here. And um, I mean, it is handy to have these things online as well. But it's very frustrating to not even have the option most of the time to getting a physical copy. So you are absolutely right. Limited Run Games then gets to pop up and have a niche market for making these uh, collectible, high expensive uh, physical copies that are um, speculated upon, which drives up the cost. And then since they're just limited release and limited uh, in distribution, they could end up all over the place. And like I say, some copies probably would sit in a retro gaming store for a while and never sell, where other ways on the internet, it would sell for a lot of money if someone were just trying to get a physical copy of a game that they really wanted on a platform. And that way they'd have something to hold. You know, I don't understand how people would consider that you know, you're, you're, you're giving up all your resale value rights too when they jumped on to the um, digital copies instead of physical copies. You're giving away all that resale value that we used to have and used to support complete systems like GameStop. And this is going to go into another reason that GameStop has so much trouble is they should have been boycotting and strongly against the downloadable content thing since the beginning because they are effectively, GameStop is the middle man and any kind of store uh, that, you know, they should have, they needed to s maintain the value of that. So I don't think that they're at a point where they're ever going to be able to say, hey, enough is enough. And uh, we're not going to support anybody who does downloadable games only or something. But that's a decision that should have been made probably a decade ago that they should have said, hey, we're going to say no to this streaming and uh, did downloadable content thing only. We won't accept that. You know, they could have even gone and boycotted certain gaming systems and made a big good name for themselves because not, and they should have told people that this was going to be a very big pain down the way how companies in hindsight have used that uh, as a revenue stream to charge you more money for downloadable, downloadable content updates and microtransactions. And so you're getting stuck here uh, with being charged more to play a game than it used to be, and you're getting way less because you're having no physical copy, which, as you know from like the retro gaming scene, and any of you that watch this probably have some type of a collection of some type of retro games or something. And um, imagine, you know, imagine if back in the day they just stopped making Nintendo games. Uh, you know, down the road, there's just not going to be any of this stuff. It's all just going to be downloadable, sure. But they, they, they do a couple things. They devalue the products because it's just downloadable. So you have no like physical connection to it. When you grab something, even a piece of paper or nothing, uh, no matter what you say, you're having a physical interaction with that. And that, that can leave a memorable uh, experience, good, bad, or sometimes forgettable, unforgettable. Sometimes people will sit there and think about, oh my goodness, the first time I opened my actual first game. It's like opening a Christmas present. You open the Christmas present, you get the game, you open the game physically, and you get to you know, feel it. You get to read the manual. You know, it might be somewhere where you don't get to play the game right away, so you'd get to read the manual and understand. Uh, maybe even if the game was terrible, you found something that you liked about it. So uh, a lot to unpack there, but I really want everybody to know that I appreciate all these great comments you're sending me, and I'm going to do my best to try to make this you know, a more regular thing. Uh, let me know what you think with a comment below on this video, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. 
and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.